I'm thrilled to kick off our first Tuesday alumni talk of the fall 2023 semester with a special guest, Sarah Syap, a 2021 finance alum. Um, Sarah, thanks for joining us today. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. It's really good to see so many friendly faces from the College of Business. Yes, we are so excited to have you. Um, and this Tuesday talk is extra exciting because it's part of Finance Week in the College of Business. Um, and students, there are other events happening this week, including a Finance Employer Networking Night tomorrow evening. So make sure you check out the other events happening this week. Um, get inspired by the experience of professionals like Sarah, who are currently working within finance. Um, and all those events can be found in Handshake, as well as in the newsletter that you should have received this morning. Um, a quick note for all on the Zoom right now, um, this is being recorded and will be available on the College of Business YouTube channel as well as Handshake. Um, and we have a limited 30 minutes today, so feel free to drop any questions that you all have in the chat or raise your virtual Zoom hand throughout and we'll address them as we go. Um, we'll also stop in a little bit, um, open it up for some questions if you have any. Um, and now without further ado, let's get into our conversation with Sarah. Um, so Sarah holds a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a concentration in Corporate Finance and Investment Analytics, alongside a degree in Political Science, because she wasn't doing enough in the College of Business, had to add in that Political Science as well, um, both earned at CSU in 2021. Um, she currently resides in Seattle, where she works as a commercial banking analyst at JP Morgan, specializing in venture-backed technology companies. Um, her role involves analyzing business projections, modeling repayment risk, assisting with portfolio management, and covering the robotics subsector. In her free time, Sarah enjoys skiing, mountain biking, and even takes ceramic classes, which is so fun. Um, so once again, Sarah, thank you for joining us this Tuesday. And I'll kick it off with our first question. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself, your career, kind of the industry that you're working in, and then just some steps that you took to get where you are now. Yeah, um, happy to. So I think like a lot of CSU um, students, I was born and raised in Colorado. I'm originally from Denver. Um, and then as you mentioned, I graduated with the class of 2021. So just over two years ago. Um, and yeah, now I live in Seattle um, as part of the JP Morgan Commercial Bank, um, which I think is like really directly related to my finance degree. Um, and with that, I work with um, corporations that, um, sorry, corporations in the technology space and specifically focusing on ones that are venture backed. So um, thinking of like what Uber or Amazon like used to be um, when they're like really small and just starting to get their feet off the ground. Um, most of their equity is coming from venture capital funds. And so we work with them to like service all of their banking needs. Um, it's a really unique space because we get to work with a lot of really cool companies, um, a lot of household names like Peloton or Glossier. So like, I think it's a very exciting space because a lot of the brands like I personally use. Um, so it's fun to, to see them and then to also like help support them on the business end. Um, and something that's really cool, I think the commercial bank sometimes gets overlooked with like college students, but, um, I know there's a huge focus on investment banking, but we partner a lot with the investment bank and also with asset wealth management advisors at JP Morgan. So I always recommend considering the commercial bank, um, at JP Morgan or another financial institution. If you're someone who is like thinking about doing finance and you really like modeling and you really like sort of the crunchiness of things, but you're not necessarily sure like where you want to dive in. It's a really great way to get a full spectrum view of a really large finance institution or bank. Um, and then I wish my story was more exciting, but I think the steps I took were like very, very common. I like studied finance in the College of Business. Um, and then I had two different internships, which I was really fortunate to get. Um, the first one was actually more an application of my political science career. Um, and so it was with the Government Affairs Office at Coca-Cola. And then the summer between my junior and senior year, I interned with JP Morgan um, in their commercial banking program. Um, which then converted to a full-time job offer after graduation. Um, I think in finance though, like for any students who are sort of wondering if pursuing a financial uh, internship is worth it, I always encourage you to do it. I think one, it's a really great way to learn if it's something that you actually could see yourself doing as a career, or even, you know, just like a first step in your career. Um, but also usually it's a really great way to get your foot in the door. Um, and I think gives you a leg up in terms of then getting a full-time job offer. Um, 
another thing that I think really helped me just in terms of like steps of what I did was I had an on-campus job. Um, and I know like students definitely flex and like what they're able to take on in terms of careers, like during the school year. But I think having a part-time job with admissions was a really great way for me to learn a lot of skills that then I was able to speak to in different interviews. And I think helped me stand out as an intern, um, to then get like both internship and full-time opportunities. Definitely. Those are great stepping stone experiences to get to where you are today. Um, and just the amount of skills that you probably gained in those, I would imagine help you where you are now. Um, so with that, could you describe your role, like your main responsibilities, maybe even describe what a typical day looks like? I know there's no typical day. Um, and just, yeah, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think finance can sometimes feel very opaque, especially if you're like learning all these models and classes and like learning about financial theory. And you're like, how does this actually like come out in practice? So my day is really a use, like it's me using both hard and soft skills, um, in a really mixed variety, which I like, um, not all finance jobs are like that. Some are very technical, um, and others are very like soft skill focused. Like you're not really ever doing modeling, but it's a lot of relationship building. Um, and I have a really nice blend of both. So I spend a lot of time with financial statements and companies, investor decks and like 409A, like cap tables, like all of this good stuff to sort of figure out like what a company's all about, what they're doing, how they're making money, um, why are venture capital funds like interested in them? And therefore like then to articulate to like JP Morgan team, are they a good fit for us to bank? And like, are they a business like worth spending our time with? Um, there are so many venture startup tech companies, um, 90% of them fail. So it's like a lot of just analyzing a company and really spending a lot of time in financial statements. Um, we also take those and we do like a typical three-year statement model. We do just kind of cash flow analysis. So like all of those things that you learn in school are things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so a lot of time in Excel, I think I'd say that's like the crunchier, more technical part of my job. But then on the flip side of that, there's a lot of relationship building. Like we really want to be close to founders or their C-suite team. We want to be making sure that we're like making healthy long-term relationships with companies, even if it doesn't make sense for us to like bank them at this moment. We want to make sure that once they get big enough or like once they hit certain milestones that they think about us, um, which is really tricky. And it, it it's definitely an industry where I think I'm learning a lot about how to navigate professional relationships and like articulate the value of the bank to founders who like, you know, usually aren't finance people. They're a lot of the times like computer scientists and things like that. So there's this like really cool soft skills element, um, which is part of why I like it. I love the modeling piece. And I'm sure a lot of the students on the call of like, you're in a finance major, that's maybe why you chose it because you really like to be in the numbers. Um, but I love that my job gives me a good blend of also like meeting with people. And I, I get to like speak a lot and use like my empathetic side and um, focus a lot on relationships as well. And that's like equally as important to success of my team as the modeling piece. Um, so yeah, my day is like a lot of like self-work and then meetings um, and a lot of teamwork as well. That's great. I think a lot of times when people think finance, they do just think I'm going to be behind a desk, desk. I'm going to be only on Excel, just crunching numbers all day. So it's nice to hear that your position is quite a balance between relationship building, um, getting that one-on-one -on -one, like FaceTime with people and building those relationships and then also doing kind of the numbers side of it. Um, great. So um, how would a student know if they're a good fit for this field? specifically yeah. with what you do? <laughs> no, it's a really good question. I think um, one, if you like, if your heart gets really excited when you do things like a case study where you really have to like sit down and look at a company kind of holistically and think about like, is this business model working well? Um, and, you know, would I lend like my own personal money to this company? I think there are some classes and some experiences at CSU that really give you a taste of that. Um, I think if you're someone that likes to be like if you're the kind of person that wants to be at a company sort of working only on that one company, there are really great corporate finance roles for you. So like working on the finance team at a tech company or at, you know, like Sarah's cookie shop or whatever it may be. But if you like to look at a lot of different company models and sort of develop pattern recognition and sort of do a deep dive and then make a recommendation and then sort of move on to the next, this role is a really good one for you because you do get to see a lot of different companies in any given like week or month. Um, and I, you know, you get like the full package. They send you their financials. They send you all of what they're about, their pipeline, um, their revenue trends, like everything that they have you get. And so it's really 
a huge data dump that they, you get that to sift through. And I think some people find that really intimidating or like not that exciting, but that sounds like something that you really like. That is what I do. And so I think that that would be a really good role for you. Um, and like I said, I think it's really similar to like how a lot of case studies are set up. So if you, if that's something that you like in college, this might be a really good role for you. Um, the other thing is, and I think just in general, like if you like to sort of work with a lot of teams, commercial banking and investment banking are going to be really good fits for you. Um, we work with the investment bank constantly sort of leading up to, and even after big liquidity events or mergers and acquisitions with our companies. Um, so we're constantly running in tandem with teams with like different priorities, different timelines. We work a lot with our asset wealth management team. Um, so yeah, I think if, if teamwork is something that you really value and you're really good at, then, um, again, like commercial banking would be a great fit. If you like to do more solo work or so where, where you own an end-to-end -end piece of the process, um, this might not be the role for you. But I, again, I think like having experiences like internships or attending chats like this are a great way to find out those like answers to those questions. So it's a really good question. And um, if I can clarify anything too, let me know. Definitely. No, that was super helpful and a good distinction. Um which I think will be really helpful for the students on the call. Um, and can you describe what your field or industry kind of looks like for someone getting started in their career? You're um, two years out from grad graduation now. Um, so what has that looked like for you? <laughs> yeah, um, so interestingly, and I, this is not uncommon in large banks, my program is actually rotational. So within the commercial bank, I've had a lot of, basically I've had, I'm in my third now one year rotation um, and all of it's within the commercial bank. All of it is within like venture backed um, company ecosystem, but some people are like in healthcare or in nonprofit work or um, like industrials or consumer sort of veins of what JP Morgan does. And so, but it's really cool because there's like um, a relationship management side. There's a side that helps companies manage payments um, and like sort of like cash flow management. Um, there's a side that's really focused on portfolio management and like risk management of our overall portfolio. So um, you get to sort of sit in a few different seats throughout your the beginning of your career. And um, initially I thought that was kind of intimidating and I was just really excited to like do one rotation specifically. And I was sort of like at the end, like that's the role that I want to like then be promoted to an associate in. Um, but I think that's really common in the financial industry for an analyst program to be rotational. Um, and I would encourage like students on the call to ask those questions when you're interviewing um, or yet when you're talking to people like at industry nights, like what's um, what you have happening tonight, um, like ask about their program, ask about like if it's rotational, if so, what are the rotation options? Um, I personally am someone who, as I mentioned, like thought I really wanted one thing and have come out sort of now in year three, thinking that I'll actually place in something different. Um, but you get a really wide, I sort of think of it as like when the culture business has you take like intro to marketing, intro to accounting, intro to finance, like you get a really wide base and then you get to specialize in something very specific. Um, and I sort of think of a rotational program and especially being an analyst at a large bank, like an extension of your education. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's what you can probably expect if you're going to a large financial institution or a large bank is something rotational, something where they're trying to show you a lot of different experiences and paths forward. Um, and then it's sort of on you to think critically about like which path you really liked, asking a lot of questions, like raising your hand for stretch opportunities um, and really trying to make sure that like you're building your own personal brand as you go. Um, so then at the end of the day, like when you sort of come out of the analyst program, most programs then call like the next level up an associate. Um, you have a really good idea of sort of which corner of the commercial banking world do you want to live in? Um, I think that's also very common for investment banking as well. Yeah, that those rotational programs are super helpful in figuring out, like I do think similar to you, a lot of people go in thinking, I'm just doing this because I know that this one part of the rotation is exactly what I want to do. But then along the way, my figure out like, oh no, there's actually a lot more to this. Um, so that's super cool that you're getting to experience all different areas. Um, wonderful. And then if you could wave a magic wand, make yourself a student again at CSU, what is one thing that you would do the same? And what is one thing that you would do different? Yeah, I loved this question. Um, so one thing that I do the same is just, I was like, pretty involved student. And I think that that was really good for a number of reasons. Like one, I got exposure to a lot of different types of 
like students and like professionals then by like way of that. So um, I think things like specifically within the college of business, like I was in the summit fund, I was in women in business, um, but also other things outside of the college of business. Like I had an on-campus job. I was in a club sport. Um, I was like in a sorority for a while. Like, I think just like trying to find ways to get involved is super helpful. Like, I don't think anyone wakes up their freshman year of college and is like, I want to be in commercial banking. <laughs> um, and there's so many careers that are like that, where it's like a really great option, but you just might not know about it. And so the like wider that you can make your network um, at CSU, then like the more opportunities and like sort of careers and windows into different lives you'll have. And I think that's super helpful then as you get to your later years at CSU and start thinking about like where you want to make your first step as a professional. Um, and also like, do things that are interesting to you. I think a lot of students do things like for the prestige of it or because it's what like they think they should be doing. Um, but like club sports had no actual relevance to like my career. They were just fun to do. So things like that, like do things that you enjoy, but, but be involved. Um, and then to answer the second part of the question, one thing that I would do differently, um, I was like really intimidated to apply to certain internships or like go to certain things where like professionals were speaking because I thought that like I didn't know enough about finance or like I would get into these situations and they would ask me a question that I didn't know um and I would say especially like when professionals are coming to CSU a lot of the times they're like me they're alumni or they have really close connections to the college so like they understand that you might not know everything and I would encourage you to go and to still ask questions or if like they're using acronyms or talking about parts of the industry that you don't understand um don't be afraid to like dig in a little bit and ask them and like, please do this for me at the end of this call as well. Like if I'm saying things that don't make sense. Um, because again, like sort of back to the, the piece that I really loved, it just helps you like have a better understanding of the bubble outside of CSU and like what is possible in the world of careers. Um, and yeah, like don't feel that you're not like finance enough <laughs> or like that you don't know enough about finance to like sort of put your, um, put yourself out there into those different opportunities. That is great advice. Um, thanks, Sarah. And I think that acronym piece especially is so <laughs> huge because there's so many acronyms in every single industry. And if you don't know what it stands for, you might not understand the conversation. So being able to ask about that is super important. So I love that. Um, I'm going to open it up for student questions after this next question that I ask. Um, so if you have a question, feel free to raise your Zoom hand or put it in the chat and I will get to you um, or you can unmute after this next question. But get thinking of some questions um, for Sarah. And in the meantime, um, Sarah, I'm curious in the finance industry, network, networking and connecting, you've touched on this a bit with others plays a significant role, um, especially in like career advancement. Could you share your experiences and strategies for effective networking, um, especially for someone looking to just start their finance career? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it is funny because I think when I was in college, like networking sounded, I don't wanna say fake, but like sort of like this like vague, like amoeba of a thing that people talk about like having value, but it's sort of like, how do you tap into this tool? And like, how do you use it? To help you. Um, and I think also a lot of networking experiences can feel very hollow and like they weren't helpful. Um, so I think this is a really good question. I'm glad you asked it. And I'm also glad that um, there's like opportunities coming up tonight and probably throughout the fall for students to network. Um, one is I would say like show up authentically. Um, don't feel that you have to like try to act or be a certain way. If, if it's not a good fit, like it won't be a good fit and that's okay. Um, but like try to show up authentically and I think as an extension of that, like bring questions that you're genuinely interested in. Um, so, so often we show up to like colleges and students are trying to ask us like really thoughtful questions that they've come prepared with, but you know, they're like about the stock market or about, you know, like what our approach to modeling is. And it's like, if you're really interested in that, like, please ask away. And like, that is really awesome. But um, if you're just more interested, yeah, like in what our day-to-day -day looks like or in how often like working on a team or like what we feel the culture is at JP Morgan, like those questions are, are probably more helpful to you as you're figuring out what you want or where you want to spend your time, especially as you're going through like interview processes or applications. Um, and also like, it's more fun for us to talk about those things. And so I would say like, ask questions that are like truly interesting to you and that you think will help move you forward, but do come prepared with them. Um, and then I would say the second piece is 
follow up. Um, I think it's always really great to like, get a LinkedIn message or an email from a student that we talked with who's like, this was really impactful. And like, I'm applying for the internship or I'm applying to be an analyst. Um, or, you know, maybe it's even, I got one the other week that was like, I talked with you and I think you helped me realize that I actually like, I'm not a good fit for commercial banking. Um, and that's equally as important and helpful, but it's so great to get a follow up and to like, know that you thought more about our conversation after it ended. Um, and I think that's how you start to build really long-term relationships and also really good personal brand, um, which is really important. And uh, the world of business, but specifically the world of finance, although I feel like everyone says this about their industry, um, is very small and your your brand is really important. And so the more you can be aligned with people thinking of you as like someone who followed up, someone who like showed up authentically and was really honest, but came prepared. Um, I think those are really great places to start and things to practice um, while you're a student and have a lot of grace around that um, because then you'll have all those good habits when you become a professional post-grad. That is wonderful advice, especially since some of these students on the call will probably go to our employer networking night tomorrow night. Um, so um, I think that's all really good things to keep in mind, students. Um, now I want to open it up, pause for a little bit, open it up to any student questions. Um, any questions from the audience? I was going to ask real quick, with uh, so many opportunities at hand, why did you end up choosing JP Morgan? Yeah, is it James that asked that question? Yes, ma'am, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's a really good question. Um, I actually, yeah, I was fortunate to have a few internship opportunities in particular to choose from. Um, and I think a few things stood out to me specifically about JP Morgan. One, I was really intrigued by the commercial bank and sort of, it was something that, I think I mentioned this earlier, but like I didn't know a lot about after taking a bunch of my classes, but as I learned more through like my interviewing process and like speaking to other analysts and associates um, through that, it was, it sounded like all the things I really wanted. Um, and it was just like one of those areas that I hadn't heard about. I also will say um, sometimes finance gets a reputation for being, for having pretty poor work-life balance. Um, the commercial bank is, I think, maybe not an exception to the rule, but like there is much, like, much stronger balance there. Um, and that was really important to me. Like I really love to ski and I love to mountain bike and like trail run and all this good stuff. And so, and I wanted to have time outside of work. So like this career path in particular was really appealing to me over some others that I think are more notorious for having less free time early on in your career, um, which that's definitely like a personal preference, but was something that stood out to me. Um, and then I was also really impressed by the culture at JP Morgan. Again, I think finance has a reputation for being a very specific way. And um, some of you may have already felt this like at internships or when you interview, but um, different workplaces will have different like vibe. <laughs> vibes not too easily, but um like different energy and I like felt like everyone that I talked to at JP Morgan was like very smart and was like very like undistracted when we were talking and like was very interested in sort of my experience and what I was trying to get out of both my internship and then becoming an analyst um and I didn't get that from every group that I talked to and so um because of that and I, I definitely think that that was a really good intuition now that I've been at the company for two years but that was also I think what really drew me to JP Morgan over some other places that gave me offers. Um, and I think definitely hopefully that empowers you to like trust your gut in those situations and to really think like, did I feel like I belonged there? And like, did did I feel like it was a really supportive environment where I could grow sort of after college? Thank you. Yeah, good question. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Sarah, I have one. Um, can you talk a little bit about the application process, like what that was like for you? I know, you know, some of these big firms have really strict deadlines that are really early on in the semester. Like we just started school a couple weeks ago um, and I know deadlines are already coming up. Can you maybe give us some insight into what that looks like at all? Yes. Oh my gosh. Happy to, because um, you're correct. A lot of firms have really early deadlines. I know ours for our summer 2024 internship is September 30th. So, um, in less than a month. <laughs> um, yeah, which is really soon. And I don't think we're uncommon in that. Like I know most mm -hmm. of the other large finance institutions, um, have things closing. So if you are a current sophomore, um, something to look into, um, and also a current junior, make sure to like, just sort of investigate most places have programs for you, but yeah, just in general, like zooming out, I think the timeline, um, 
without trying to sound like the person that's like telling the second grader like about college choices and like studying for the ACT, it really does move quickly. And so I think that the more you can at least just understand the timeline, um, then helps you figure out like when and where you want to spend more of your time. So for finance, most of the internships for the summer between your junior and senior year, and they're usually pretty specific about having students in that range because we know you've taken your junior level classes, which are really important to being just like a, a more helpful intern and like having the experience sort of be better for interns as well because they, they know a little bit more. Um, those applications usually open the summer before and then as I mentioned, will close sometime really early in the fall. So usually sometime in September. So if there are uh, companies that you're looking at applying to, I would definitely check those deadlines and make sure they're double underlined in your calendar. Um, if you're a sophomore, a lot of companies have either like a fellowship program or some sort of like early pipeline interaction where you can like go to a little conference or sort of be like a mini intern. So that's something you can also look into. Those applications though, usually run on the same timelines as actual internships where they open the summer before and then they'll close sometime in the fall. Um, then what happens is you'll usually get asked to do a higher view, which is like a virtual interview and they can be a little intimidating. I highly recommend practicing them or using, I know like the College of Business has a lot of not to like plug them, but they really are great. They have a lot of like tools for interviewing both virtually and in person. Um, so usually you get some sort of virtual interview and then go through what's called super days. Um, JP Morgan is not the only company that sort of has coined this term. Um, basically what super days is, is it's one to two days where you're in multiple interviews, usually with two to three people each. So in total, you'll usually talk to about eight to 12 people at the company. Um, and they'll range. They can be behavioral. They can also be technical. Um, I know like at JP Morgan, we give you a case study the week before and then have you present um, during one of your interview slots on your case study. So um, there's a really wide range and usually that happens um, and then you'll get an offer letter. So it, it moves pretty quickly after that. And um, usually summer internships for finance have all been slotted by mid-November the fall before. So like by the end of the year, most of the seats will be taken, which I know sounds really scary. And again, like, I don't want to be the person that's like freaking out, but um, it is something to just be aware of that those timelines move very quickly and very early and they're pretty set. Um, if you're not in finance, I, you have a little bit more wiggle room <laughs> um, and a lot more companies like in supply chain and manage or um, yeah, supply chain management, entrepreneurship, marketing, like have spring timelines, but for, for finance, fall is king. So yeah. <laughs> happy to answer more questions on that, but it's a good question, Patty. Thanks for calling that out. Yeah, thank you for the insight. Yes, that was super helpful. Um, and Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today.